You know, there's always been talk of sequels and things like that. And it's really funny because it's Steven Spielberg's baby, you know, and he's very particular about this film. So I've always viewed any attempt at revamping the character or showing it, you know, in a different context, as sort of a thing that's never gonna happen. Then they said, well, Steven signed off on the story, he loves it. And I said, what? Looking at the storyboards and everything, I could see exactly why Steven was really behind it because the integrity of the story isn't lost in this retelling or reshaping of it. A little bit more smoke. Actually, it's good right now. Ready and action. More than anything, the whole story is just about family. Young Elliot is a grown man, and he now has a wife and kids, and so the way that that sort of bookends, or the balance that that has to the original story, I think is really beautiful in that way. This commercial is really all about connection and togetherness and building unbreakable bonds with people. I mean, I think this makes a really nice holiday film because the holidays are about friends and, and family and distant relatives coming together. Sometimes after long periods of being apart, sometimes in spite of great distances. I remember this guy. He's getting a little older there. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to Henry Thomas, and I said, it's amazing the way you can relate to this, this guy. And he said, I just think of him as real. Such an iconic character. You know, Stephen never wanted to do a sequel. This is a character that is beloved by everybody for generations. So you can't screw it up. We have a team of mechanics, painters, mold makers that all have to recreate this character. This radio is controlling his eyes and eyebrows. It's amazing how much technology has changed filmmaking and this industry. You can make him talk. E.T. Home. And one, two, three, scream. I was saying to the puppeteers, I wish we would have had this guy back then because uh, it would have made things so much easier. But, but at the time, you know, in the early 80s, it was all cutting edge and we were breaking new ground and it was a totally new frontier. You know, with a rod puppet, you get a really fluid, connected performance. Little subtleties of head movement, arm movement that you can't get with internal robotics. And that's an easier thing for CG to do, is to remove the rods, remove the puppeteers, than to do a full CG character. We took everything great about the puppet, and then we used CG to just take it to the next level and bring it to life. Dilating pupils, adding breath, refinessing textures. The full CG way would actually be bringing it into the 21st century. We actually wanted to go more back to what Steven Spielberg was doing in the original movie. You'll go like this, and he's gonna copy you. Yeah, exactly. Ready, and action. Doing this in CG like would present huge challenges in terms of working with our child actors. That tactile presence of the puppet for our kids was great. I don't think we would have ever gotten the same performances out of them if that was a full CG character. There are certain limitations that a puppet gives you and we're designing shots in the same way they did in the original movie because they were working with those same considerations. Really leaning more into backlighting on E.T. You know, they backlit E.T. whenever possible, very little bit of fill light. And in doing so, it made him feel much more lifelike. In the making of this film, we wanted to nod to the original, but not totally remake it. There were certain iconic scenes and images and even props that we definitely wanted to pay homage to. We have put dozens and dozens of Easter eggs throughout this film. A photo of the original dog, Harvey, Gertie's cup, the drawing that Elliot drew of E.T. in school, the bike, the original bike. All of these things are peppered throughout the film so that every time you watch it, you're likely to see something new that you've never seen before. When Gertie's watching TV and she's learning the alphabet, it was B for basket on the TV. So we got that in there. 
just little things like that that we've kind of thrown in. The bobby pins actually make a connection on the saw blade as it spins around with exposed parts that weren't painted. And that actually sends a signal on the original one, which sends the message that E.T. sends out to his home planet. It's working! It's hard when you have to try to match it as best as possible, but it's also pretty cool to create something that, you know, gives you nostalgia from your childhood. There's a lot of nostalgia in it, you know? There's a lot of nostalgia for us as viewers, as well as for Elliot, of course. I hope that when people watch this film, it would kind of spark that reminiscing, almost, where you just go back to that time when you loved this film and kind of just relive that childhood moment. I'll be right it's so neat how we're able to bring this story to life and still honor and respect the way that it was originally told. I think in all of Spielberg's films, he's not afraid to really go to a place that's sentimental, that's emotional. So I think really the homage would be, can we create an emotional story in this abbreviated telling? It has such a special place in people's hearts, this film and this story. I think audiences are going to love it.